everyone hope you're all well it's rachel from moonlight stitches and i'm going to do the final one on the bunting the spring or easter bunting today um and i thought i'm just going to do some little lettering uh i i haven't done a download for this because i've just sort of freewheeled it if you like um but what i've done is i've i've written some wording onto some tissue paper then i've got a piece of solve which is water soluble soluble stabilizer and you can draw or transfer your um pattern onto it or your writing so what i'm going to do i'm just going to try and just i'm just adjusting where i want it just to have a little light with my glasses on i don't mind if it's upside down or back to front or whatever not back to front if it's i don't mind if it's not level because <laughs> oh at this stage i'm not drawing it onto the it's not going onto the um onto the fabric so i'm just gonna get i'm using a uni pin fine liner i'm hoping it'll draw on it will and i'm just going to draw onto my solve i'm hoping Hello. i was going to write happy easter but then i decided that i'll write hello spring because then i won't have to put them away so early on after easter's finished <gasps> uh, that's my thought process anyway hello just check that that's if it hasn't gone over i'm gonna get rid of that it hasn't gone on i must have that's okay hello as I say, I'm not too worried about it being too even. I'm, I'm really not that bothered. A um, soft leaded pencil will do the trick just as easily, by the way. Just that I happen to have this pen handy. Spring, also I'm just looking at where I'm... I haven't got this doesn't stick down with an iron or it doesn't it hasn't got any glue on it but I'll show you a little trick I'll show you a little trick that I use these green markers are just for where I wanted it to be I tend to because this solves in water what I'll do is because I'll you can pin it on absolutely do pin it on but just get rid of Gertrude's hair if you just get a little bit of water it starts to stick itself down to the fabric Can you see you don't want too much else it dissolves completely there we go you can see it's starting to dissolve but just leave it and it'll itself down just don't want to do it too don't get it too wet it's just a, it is and if you start dabbing your fingers on it it starts to get really um, sticky and come away on you <laughs> so just be wary of that I'm just gonna let that settle a minute but I can put on oh that didn't want to stay it's stuck to there all oh, best laid plans and all that there you go look it's sticking okay, just move it away from the that and it's stuck down and i'll just let that 
dry off a little bit. I might just put a pin there because I didn't want to spray. Um, but yeah, I bought this thinking it was a stick on, pick and stitch, stick and pick, stick. Stick and stitch, or oh, whatever. Stick and stitch, pick and stitch. <laughs> and it's not. So I was a bit of miffed, to say the least. So just let that settle a minute and get rid of the excess there, because I don't want that on. But if you haven't got this, don't fret. Just use a pen, a water soluble pen, or a heat soluble pen, and draw straight on. So I'm going to go in with a, actually I'm not going to use that, I think I'm going to use some, um, shall I use silk or shall I use some uh, pearly? I think I'm going to use this pearly, oops. And I'm going to go with that pretty spring green and just get a thread, a needle. And I'm just, I'm literally going to do stem stitch. You can do back stitch, in fact. You can do whatever stitch you want, but I shall be doing a stem stitch. It's, mine's still a bit damp, so I would l advise that you do let it dry. So stem stitch, for those of you who are new to embroidery, is you come up through the back and then you take a little stitch. Then you go back and on the first stitch you want to go halfway and come up but keep your thread to one side but keep it to the same side so it's even um i'm going to go over that way no no i'm not i don't really matter so just pull and keep your thread even and then you keep the thread on the same side you're going to take another little stitch and this time you're going to come up where you went down and meet that last stitch okay and you're just going to keep on going like i say you want you probably want to let you the water dry a little bit so it's not so sticky because mine's getting a bit I'm trying to keep the fin my fingers out of the way if you want to put this in a hoop please do um, but I would suggest you put it in a hoop before you cut your triangle out thing with this as well I'm going to say is because it's not sticking down everywhere it might wander across the fabric so if you were doing it in a hoop you could trap it in the hoop make a bigger bit and trap it in the hoop I'm just using this because I just thought it's uh, I've got it <laughs> I wouldn't buy it again, but I seem to have a great big roll of it. And once you've stitched your wording or your picture, you can dissolve it. It just dissolves in warm water, cool water. So I'm going to carry on 
and I'm going to stitch all the way around everything I won't stay and make you watch that would be tiresome and tedious for you even though I know some of you will say to me no I like to watch I like you to chat it's like having you in the room with me sometimes it's uh, sometimes actually I like to be stitching and chatting and I pretend that you're in the room with me it doesn't seem like I'm on my own then what I'm using by the way the thread is a very fine pearly cotton pearly oops and I've got a flipping I've got a noose knot in it now that's the downside of a cotton pearly it twists on itself a lot Let's try and get rid of that are we going yeah so you have to keep untwisting but I don't tend to um, stitch at any great speed and the reason for that is because I like to be in the moment with it and I'm not in a rush to do it it doesn't usually I'm in a rush when I'm on here because I'm thinking I've got to get the next stage done and, got to, and I must remember not to do that to myself so I'm going to go I'm going to go straight over the top of that like I would if I was um, writing it so you go over and back down and loop if you put into Google search into your letter you know your thing handwriting or brush lettering something like this will come up like I say I didn't do a a download because I, I felt like it was probably a personal thing what letters you wanted to do how you want to do it And I just, and you can just print it out and copy it, trace over it. You could even do the tracing over it, do it flip sided, and do the rub with the pencil thing. Transferring whatever's uh, you find easiest, really. But like I say, just put into Google search of or into your lettering um, what letter you know brush lettering this is modern calli modern calligraphy or something like that whatever like I say whatever style suits you it's not um, it wasn't something I thought you'd struggle with you can just use your own handwriting as well. That's always good. Do you know your is a, a a little tip? You know when your your thread starts to become a little bit knotty. It's usually because the end of your thread is starting to fray. So if you just snip that off, it'll start to come through nice and easy again. I say that and I bet it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you see, no knotties. Not getting knotty. When you're going round corners with your thread, with your stitches, do the tiniest. Start doing tiny stitches. And you should be able to get around without it looking like calculator letters old-fashioned calculator letters so tiny tiny stitches to go around and stem stitch is very forgiving when you 
going round corners or circular things. Um, somebody once told me that to do lettering, start backwards and work backwards. I never have, but don't know whether that's something that you, it, if you're struggling to keep it neat, uh, that helps. I don't do it because I, I, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't really struggle with keeping it too neat. Um, hang on a minute, have I gone? Started going over the other way. Have I done time? Oh well. <laughs> oh dear. Not worrying. Started with it on the back side, so didn't I? That's why, because I went round that corner at the top. That's it. As I always say, it's um it's a slow stitch project. It's not we're not we're not making the king's robes for the coronation. If you make a couple of mistakes, it doesn't matter. I mean, if I was making the robes for the coronation, I mean, what an honour for a start, but I think I'd be uh, a little bit more conscientious of what I was doing. I did watch a programme about it, them uh, embroidering them, uh, Camilla's shoes were embroidered with the C and the little crown, the fabric that was going to go on the front of her shoes, I mean, you know you've made it then don't you? <laughs> Oh dear. So, I'm waffling again. Tight little stitches around the tops of the... Um, curves. Ouch, just stabbed myself. Sometimes I get little tiny dots of blood on my fabric and I think, where's that come from? It's when I've, st I've stuck myself with a needle and I don't know. It's dried up now, that, and it's holding quite well. So that's a little tip for you if you've got solve but not iron-on. What I thought I'd ordered was printable iron-on solvent, but it was none of that. But it doesn't matter. It will be used. I keep making little lists of things that I need to pick up when I go to the Stitch Show, Stitch Festival on Thursday. If you're watching this many years down the line, or hopefully you are, um, I'm going to the Stitch Festival in March 2024, the year is. Just thought I'd say that. Yeah, so I keep making a little list. And I have got a list. But you guess what? I bet I don't take it with me. Um, little things that I'd like to pick up while I'm at the Stitch Festival. Top of the list is a decent pair of fabric cutting scissors. Because although I've got a brand new pair of Fiskars scissors, I can't use them. They hurt my hands. So I'm hoping to have a little play around with some others. It's very difficult. So yeah, I'm making a list of all the little things that I want to pick up that I've seen people using and think, oh, I'd like to try that. 
and my local haberdashery doesn't have them and even though I have um, I do have trade accounts with people I can't get them because they're not something that my suppliers have so it's always nice to go and have a little look at and also who doesn't want to be surrounded by beautiful fabric and beautiful works of art in the galleries stitching who doesn't want that in their life hey not me but I'm hoping to do a little bit of filming, a little bit of videoing, but not too much because obviously we want to enjoy ourselves and I don't want it to spend time um, filming and not seeing what I want to see. So I will, we will do a little bit, um, but it won't be an awful lot. I won't be, it won't be a, you know, full on documentary of the Stitch Festival. <laughs> That's 100% for sure. And also we'll show you what we've been and bought. If anything, of course. I know I keep going on that I'm going to go to Liberties. I'm so excited to go to Liberties. It's many years since I've been. It's pre-pandemic, pre that's for sure. I'm going to run out of thread. And on that, I will stop the video, I think, and come back when I've done the finish the stitch, stitching. I'm going to do the same same colour, and then I'm going to come and add it. Come in and add some um, other bits and bobs on it. I think that'll be. It's it. The thing is, I go to the bitter end of a thread. <laughs> I can't just think, oh, I'm just going to... So, I don't like the waste. And even when, I've, even when I cut it off, I have to save it for a project, as you saw with the Easter nests. Can't help myself. Right, I'm going to go and stop. That is, I'm going to finish off my thread and I'll be back when I've finished stitching that up. I'll probably dissolve this off and come, I'll, I might show you that little process if if, if I'm um, able. But I'll, I'll be back when I've done that and this is dried off and then we'll put some um, little bits and bobs in it some extras so i will see you again shortly so i'm back and i've finished my stitching and i thought i'd dissolve this solve before your eyes <laughs> i'm told that you just pop it in and it disappears which it seems to be doing i'm just going to get rid of that Yeah, cool. Let's just cop it on there. I don't seem to want to move. Where's that thread? Yeah, it's all gone. Wonderful. Disappearing. So I'm just going to pop it onto here to soak up some of the water. Get rid of me and let that dry. Did anybody else have these from um, this, your children's primary school? This is actually from my, my nephew and niece's primary school. Um, that's not my niece. I don't know where they are. I ought to. Mrs. Murphy though. They're so fun to look at, aren't they? Katie, Freya. I'm going to have a quick look, see if I can find my niece and nephew. That's 2012. Ruby, there's my niece. 
Ruby with the curly hair. <laughs> um, I want to say that Archie and George will be on here, but I'm not sure where. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. That's definite. Jack. Anyway, I'm digressing, aren't I? Let's have a look, see if I can find them. <laughs> oh, I, I like Mr. Parnell. He's very good. And Mrs. Otten. She's extremely good. Oh, look at Mrs. Thackstone. Look at those eyelashes. I'm not sure about that grin. <laughs> These are obviously drawn by the children as well. Um... I'm just looking, I can't find any. They were all at the school at the similar sort of time, so I don't know, I can't find Archie and George. Maybe they're not on here. Maybe it was Ruby's last year. I'm not sure. Archie, oh yeah, there's Archie wearing his football kit. Definitely. <laughs> Anyway, as I say, digressed on to having a little nostalgic look at. Um, that's not my George. George is the eldest. So I think he might have gone up to the big school by then. Up to the next school. Secondary school. Possibly. Anyway, I'm going to just soak up some water into that. And then I'll let it dry. Uh, flat dry. It's, it is kind of sticking, so it might have some little bits left on it, it has there. I'm just going to try and wash that off. I got all nostalgic and forgot what I was doing. <laughs> oh dear. But I have got them with my two on. And one of the ladies that came to do the cockerel workshop, she brought along one that I heard her children on and she cut them out and sewed them onto the cockerel workshop, onto the cockerel, which I thought was a wonderful idea. That's still got a bit of sticky on there, which, um, yeah, really, really nice idea. Right. I'm going to pop that out into the sunshine because it's beautiful out there and let that dry and then I'll come back and what I'll do, we'll add some flowers I think. So I'll be back shortly when, well, when that's dried and um, I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Hello, I'm back <laughs> and I've finished off my stitching and I thought I'd add a couple of little flowers in um, I'm just going to do a little daffodil I think um, and I'm just sort of I feel like a lazy daisy might be the answer here I'm just going to draw in uh, petals again don't worry about them being botanically correct it's not essential uh, probably put one down here as well and different size I'll leave that there. I might put do a, a tiny little one there but with I won't do the ribbon center okay so I'm gonna do a center on each of those and I'm just gonna do a few French knots in there erasable pen as as usual um, I've done an erasable because I don't think you'll see the other one so I'm gonna do a lazy daisy stitch but I'm gonna fill it let me find a, a fillet with some um, 
stitches. So I'm using a bit of my sheep ears thread. Um, I think I've said before this is going to be available in the on the website shop soon. I'm just waiting on the delivery. It'll probably be when we come back from from London. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I've been super gluing <laughs> and I'd, I've got some on the end of my finger and fingers and I can't I can't feel what I'm doing. Oh dear. I might have to get a needle threader out. I think I'm going to have to. Needle threader, where are you? No. There. Oh, excuse me. If you get my head in the way. Sorry. My big bonds. There we go. That's it. Yeah, I've got um, super glue on the end of my fingers, and it's even though I've washed my hands, it's it's um, strange. Right, so for a lazy daisy, I might be teaching you how to suck eggs here, but you you come up. I'm going to make it a bit bigger gap. It's like a um, a standalone daisy uh, chain stitch. So you're going to make a big loop and I'm going to come down this side. You can join them together there but I'm coming down that side and I'm going to make a point there. Thread around the back of your needle. And then go back down. see and I'm just gonna fill in with a few stitches I'm just making a suggestion of a petal I'm not doing any kind of thread painting or anything like that um, It doesn't have to be too filled in. I'm going to come down that side. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect because I will get rid of the um, lines with the heat. So I'm going to come out and up there, round the back. And tack it down and I'm just going to carry on doing a few stitches inside until I've got six um, petals. Okay. Try to not get them too tight otherwise they'll be misshapen. Again, if you were doing this in a hoop, it might make life a lot easier for yourself. Um, but don't cut out your bunting until you've you've stitched it all, then cut it out after. If I'm doing really tiny pieces of bunting, um, I tend to just keep it all in on the hoop till I've finished and then cut out. Keep going, 
the three and then I'll show you what I'm going to do for the trumpet not worried that I'm oh come back out goodness me let me just I've now got a knot I don't think I've ever done a single video without getting a knot in my thread yet or making some kind of silly mistake but I'm only human as I keep saying and I know that I could edit out lots and lots of it but I'm not going to I feel like it makes it more um, it makes me feel like I'm a more one of you <laughs> and not stitch perfect because I am certainly far from that it's been absolutely glorious here today and I've tried not to sit inside too much stitching I've tried to get out and do some bits in the garden in between stitching just let me undo the untwist it with purlays you'll get this all the time they twist upon themselves because they keep as you're going through they it, you're sort of making it more and more twisted so, so if you're out just stop myself again if you even with a stranded cotton it'll still do that but these because they're more um the twists uh tighter together tends to happen more but anyway yes I'm trying to get out in the garden in between rain but we've not had any so far touch touch wood today You can always tell when it's going to be a nice sunshining day. You get a lot of horses out and about in the village, people riding. And Reggie loves to uh, say hello to everyone. Lots of them know him. And so he's a character in in his own way in the village got like a picket fence and he can just poke his head through between the palings and have a and say hello quite comical I'm hoping you can see this lemon against this creamy coloured background. Might just get one more stitch out of this bit of thread. Yes, just, 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 just. Right, I'm just going to stretch it out a bit because it's gone a bit puckered. I've right, just finished. Oh, I've got a big knot on the back. Oh, but a minute. Oh well, you're not going to see the back anyway. Well, you will if you don't cover it up, which I'm probably not going to, but I don't mind. Put that in the art. So, I'm going to make a trumpet um, with some ribbon. Now then, I feel like that bit. Uh, just. I'm going to get some machine thread I'm going to use ooh, I'm going to thread up I've got one of those automatic threading machine things but I don't know where I've put it <laughs> oh, I need to have a big tidy up 
Right, I'm just going to double up my machine thread just to give it a bit of strength. Put a biggish knot in it. Because what you're going to do is you're going to gather at one side, gather your ribbon. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you what you needed, did I, before I started? And just see. Not a bit more, I think. Just a little tiny bit more. To go around the edge. As I say, it's a suggestion rather than an actual kind of trumpet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull that out I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing and I'm going to go between the threads just underneath the knot okay just make sure that I'm on the on the side that's and give it a bit of a pull. I'm just going to get rid of, snip that off, and I'm just going to stitch it, snip, stitch it down. Okay. Come back up. There we go. Okay. And that will do. Now, for the other, because um, I don't want to, I'm, I'm going to do some French knots. Um, just find a needle. I'm going to use this, not use this, this is like a wool. Cotton, no it isn't, it's a cotton. It's one that I was gifted, so not something I'd usually buy. It's quite thick. Right, okay, I'm going to do a couple of French knots in here actually stop that I'm going to do a bit of a I'm going to do my thing first I don't know what I want a bigger bigger needle there we go How? So much easier to use a needle threader. I don't know why I struggle. I do it all the time. So with the smaller ones, I would just go around and do it. I won't fill the lazy daisy in. Let's go around. I'm giving a suggestion of petals. into the middle up back around the back I'm not too worried about the neatness it's you know it's a I think of um, nature it's not always perfect, is it? I mean, it's perfect in its own little way. But it doesn't have to be super perfect. Oh, Reggie. I've shut the door on him because I'm trying to film and he keeps bothering. 
me. Plus is absolutely his nose is covered in mud. His paws are covered in mud because he's been digging. We have planted some new plants he's had to dig up around it because it helps. But now he's covered in mud. He'll need a bath later on. You say the word bath to him and he goes and hides. <laughs> oh dear. We were just half is doing his camper conversion and he was just saying about where to put the water supply sink and everything and I sort of suggested one area and he suggested another um, and his reasoning behind it was he wanted to be able to get Reggie hosed down um, without being inside the camper van itself so that was a you know to add a insult to injury to poor Reg I'm going to do this last one I mean these could be any flower really any yellow spring flower primrose daffodil it doesn't really matter does it And again, this is just my little idea. You can do your own thing. Here comes the sun round. Hope you can see, because I've not got the blinds down. And I don't really want to put the blinds down, because let's face it, we've had a rubbishy winter, miserable, miserable first few weeks of spring. And now we're getting some nice sunshine and I want as much as I can, soak up the rays. Of course, if you're not very adept at hand sewing, at hand embroidery, you can always pop buttons on or, um, you know, you can buy those little bits that are already got a little flower in. I was looking to see if we've got one handy. Or you can put some more lacy bit is on of course whatever's whatever you want whatever you fancy doing I do love a lazy daisy lazy daisy and french knots and bullion knots more so French knots than bullion knots, I think. French knots are like... Ooh. They just fill me full of happiness. Just one last one. And I've gone off centre with my things, I don't mind. I suppose I could have done one on its, you know, side facing. I didn't think about that. Anyway, that's them. Three done. And I might have to just, because I've done my favourite, will I get a knot in it? Just, just hold that down. Wonderful. You won't see this other orange, um, if you can see it at all, when, when I've finished, because I'm going to get the iron on it. Or some heat sauce so I'm going to do a French knot or two one wrap because this is quite thick oh look at that so, so gorgeous I'm going to do three three knots one two
have got a video on how to do French knots by the way and there is a video a little short on how to do a lazy daisy but I've just shown you anyway oh, I really like this again I will say if you're making another a back into your um, pendant don't worry about the tidiness although I never look, worry about the neatness and the tidiness of the back because I think that's part of it anyway I like to see the workings I know a lot of people don't but the, just on the um, thing of a French knot if you're doing them quite loose you know they, they, they tend to be bigger try not to um, put so many wraps on them they turn into a bullion I'm going to sort of bring that out a bit so it looks like it's pointing that way slightly. There we go. I might just squeeze another little tinky one one in there. That is it, ladies and gents. That's nice to thread. That's a lovely thread. Or a fill. 100% cotton. Mmm, nice. I like it. So, I will get rid of the um, orange. Um, marker pen heat erase pen I'll go and do that and then I will show you how to put the the bias tape on in another video because um, I need to set up the uh, sewing machine and everything you'll need a sewing machine by the way <laughs> you won't need you don't need a sewing machine but I'm going to do it on a sewing machine but you can do it by hand of course right I will say goodbye um, if you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and if you're new subscribe and if you've got any questions or want to give me any tips or encouragement or whatever please do so in the comments and I will see you all again very soon bye bye happy stitching